Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I'd like to talk about certain dynamics of electron, which is uh, rotating around the nucleus of hydrogen atom. Now, why hydrogen? Because it's only one electron. The simplest model. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Unix, called Physics for Teens, presented on Unisor.com. Um, there are some other courses. There is a prerequisite course, which is Mass for Teens, which I do suggest you to take, or at least familiarize yourself with whatever material is there, because I am using it all the time, obviously. Um, now, the website contains basically courses, which means if you found this lecture somewhere on like YouTube or somewhere else, it's just one singular lecture. On a website, it's a course. So there is a menu, there are certain sequence of rec lectures. Also, every lecture on this um, website um, is supplemented with a textual description, which basically like a textbook. Um, there are problems solved, there are exams, which you can take as many times as you want. Nobody is actually uh, forcing you into certain grades or anything like that. Just try to do it until you feel perfectly comfortable. And, uh, and the site is totally free. There are no advertisements, nothing to distract you from getting knowledge. So, today we'll talk about orbiting electrons. So, we are assuming at this particular moment the um, model presented by Rutherford, uh, the planetary uh, model of the atom, and uh, further developed by Bohr with certain improvements, I would say, and we will talk about this separately. So basically, um, we are assuming a well purely mechanical ele uh, electrical problem that there are two masses, one is a nucleus, another is an electron. They have certain charge, electric charge. Electric charge attracts them. Nucleus is positive, electron is negative we um, ignore the gravitational component of this because the particles are, are very small. It's not like planets. Um, so we are talking only about electrical uh, interaction between them. And we will try to calculate the characteristics of the electron's movement around a nucleus, which allows this electron to stay on a stationary orbit and not fall onto the nucleus. So it's like in the mechanical um, equivalent of this whenever we're talking about satellite orbiting the planet. Satellite, if it's on a certain radius, it must have certain speed. Here we have exactly the same thing. If there is a certain radius of rotation uh, radius of the orbit electron is uh, rotating around the nucleus, it must have certain speed. And let's just calculate the speed and whatever else we can. Okay? Now, first of all, what we have if we have an electron, we are assuming its mass is E, uh, it's M, and its electrical uh, charge is negative E. Now, these are known uh, constants. I mean, it was measured somehow. There are experiments. We know how to measure the mass of the electron and its charge. Now, incidentally, uh, since we're not interested in gravitational uh, interaction between electron and nucleus, only in electrical, we don't need the mass of the nucleus, but we do need the electric charge of the nucleus. And what is electric charge of the nucleus? So if this is electrons, the nucleus is supposed to be plus E. Why? Because the atom is supposed to be electrically neutral. So there is minus E charge on an electron. That's why there is a plus E charge on the um, 
on the nucleus. And then we have the Coulomb's law, basically, right? So that gives us the force. The force between nucleus and the electron, uh, positive and negative, is supposed to be K. K is Coulomb's constant, also known thing. Charge of the one, which is E. Charge of another, which is also E. This is nucleus, this is electron, divided by square distance between them. Now, uh, it's supposed to be actually with a minus sign or plus sign, doesn't really matter. I'm talking about magnitude of this force, which is Ke squared divided by R squared. Okay, on one hand, we have this force, which uh, is pulling um, electron towards the nucleus. Now, since we are talking about a rotation, and we are assuming it's a circular orbit, there is a centripetal acceleration. So, from purely mechanical um, viewpoint on this particular rotational movement, the electron is supposed to be accelerating all the time towards nucleus. Now, without the force, it would just fly away without the electric force. So, since electric force pulls it back towards the nucleus, there is an acceleration, centripetal acceleration, which, as we know, equals to v squared divided by r, where v is a linear speed of the electron on the orbit, the one which we are supposed to find. And, since we have the second uh, Newton's law, this same force, which on this hand, from the electrostatic uh, viewpoint, is expressed as such, it's supposed to be equal to ma. That's the second law, which is mv squared divided by r. And since it's exactly the same force, so this force is supposed to have this acceleration, so there e th th it's the same force just calculated through different uh, 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 laws of physics. So that's equal to r squared. Or, let me just put r squared here, it would be mv squared r equals to ke squared, from which v is equal to square root of ke squared divided by mr or e square root of k divided by m r, where m is the mass of electron, r is radius of orbit, k is Coulomb's constant, and e is a charge of the electron. Now, from this, incidentally, uh, kinetic energy of the electron and anything else is equal to mv squared divided by 2. That's the definition, right? So from this we can actually define what is kinetic energy of electron. It's Ke squared divided by 2mr, right? mv squared? No, no m here. Just 2r. R and divided by 2, yes. So now we have a kinetic energy of the electron. And obviously we can add the potential energy since we know the parameters and have the full energy of electron. So this is a very, very simple view based on a very, very simple atoms model. Um, in reality, when we will introduce um, something which is uh, related to quantum of energy, which we did address before, that complicates the whole picture. Uh, so the Bohr's atom model combines the Rutherford model, which is planetary model, which we are talking right now, with quantization. <coughs> uh, and that kind of complicates it, but 
it corresponds to experiments. And uh, no matter how maybe strange or weird or whatever, the whole principle of quantization of energy or momentum, etc., um, sounds like nothing we can do about it. Since it corresponds to experiments, then that's, that's what nature actually gives us. Um, I suggested to read the notes for this lecture. It's a very short, um, it, it's a little problem if you wish, but it's a very short one and very simple one. But still, read the notes for this lecture. It's on unizor.com courses called Physics for Teens. Then there is a part of this course which called Atoms. And if you click on the Atoms menu, that's the first chapter, which is basic building blocks of the matter. And then there is this orbiting electron uh, lecture inside that particular chapter. All menu driven, etc. Okay, thank you very much and good luck.